I think we can all agree that when something new comes around, we look at what we've been using for a few years and it looks antiquated by comparison. Take my trusty a7 III for example, which has practically been to war with me and survived everything that I've thrown at it. This camera was one of Sony's most successful releases and in many ways was the Goldilocks camera at its launch, capable of great photos and video. But the camera by today's standards feels a bit handicapped. Since its release, Sony has upgraded sensors and processors on their cameras, as well as added internal 10-bit 422 video. Now, with the launch of the new a7 IV, Sony has filled many of these performance holes to create a very powerful yet affordable hybrid use camera. Today, I'm gonna to take you through how it compares to the a7 III. This will provide insight to either those like me who currently shoot with the a7 III or those deciding between the two, because it's important to note that the a7 III is not discontinued. They're still making it and they're still selling it, but for less than the price of an a7 IV. So let's get into it. Okay, let's talk build first. Yeah, I get that it's not as sexy as talking image quality and we're gonna get to that, but I think build is very important. And the four is a bit larger than the three, which makes it feel more robust and is a bit kinder to those with large hands. Now, they've also made it a bit easier to use with a quick uh, sort of selection mode for photo, video, and S&Q. And this way, you don't have to peer up top to switch modes, which is super handy when it's parked up high on a tripod. Now, the exposure compensation dial is now fully programmable to a variety of options and is lockable. And the joystick is also updated to be a little bit more tactile. Oh, and now we finally have a flippy screen, which is oh so very awesome for either low shots or high angle shots. And the lack of this was the one thing that really frustrates me with the a7 III. Another great and long needed feature is the sensor protection. When turning off the camera, the shutter can now drop down to protect the sensor when swapping lenses. I've long wished for this because I found that Sony sensors are notoriously prone to attracting dust. I've had so many photos and videos boned by dust specs despite me blowing it out when swapping lenses. Now in terms of critiques, they are the following. I still don't like that the menu button is on the left hand side next to the EVF. After years of shooting on Sony, I still struggle with this. And I also don't like how the picture profiles do not change when switching from photo to video. If you set your video to say S-Log3 and then you switch over to photo, your JPEGs will still be in S-Log3. It's so dumb and it feels like it's an easy firmware fix that they've just really never bothered to do. Okay, so now let's talk picture quality. First, for photos. The a7 IV has an upgraded resolution of 33 megapixels, up from 24 of the a7 III. Now the question we always ask is, does it make a difference? Well, if you zoom in to just before you can see the pixels, yes, the resolution absolutely makes a difference. If I was printing my photos for large gallery displays, for example, then yes, the a7 IV is better. But let's zoom out, even just a tiny bit. Once we do that, there is absolutely no visual difference. So if you're publishing in magazines, online, or making small prints, there is little advantage to upgrading in terms of perceived detail. Let's now move on to color. Sony changed their color a few cameras back, and I think it was around the a7R4. Skin tones are definitely better. And when I shoot a chart, you can actually see a subtle push towards greens and a magenta correction. This is great if you're sending out JPEGs with little correction, but chances are that you're probably going to be doing some raw file editing, and in that case, it likely doesn't matter as much. Let's move on to video quality. If there's one singular resounding reason to upgrade, it's this, 10-bit 422 internal, which makes a world of difference. Not to beat a dead horse here, but log profiles do not work suitably in 8-bit. There's just simply not enough bits to go around. Here's an example. S-Log3 on both cameras. When graded either manually or with a LUT, skin tones and colors on the a7 III are, well, unusable in my opinion, but look absolutely fantastic on the a7 IV. I can step down to S-Log2 on the a7 III, which fixes the patchiness of the color, but it just makes it matted and lifeless. So still not really ideal. And for that reason, you should never shoot log on 8-bit, even when it's provided. But that's not the end of the story. The a7 IV also comes with Sony's lauded S Cinetone. And if you don't plan on shooting in log, then shoot in Cinetone. It's got a ton of latitude provided that you don't overexpose it. And if you don't ever plan on shooting log, then you can also shoot in one of the other many hypergamma profiles on the a7 III. I myself have created a custom one that mimics S Cinetone. And it works so well that I used it as a B cam on an Amazon Prime documentary series and it intercut perfectly with the FX9. So in summary, if you want to shoot log, then get the a7 IV. 
If you don't need it, then the a7 III will almost certainly suffice. We can't talk about video though without mentioning that the camera is also capable of 60p at 4K now. While the a7 III only did 30p at 4K. 60p however is cropped to APS-C, but I really don't think this is a big deal. Just back your camera up or use a wider lens. This is another area where I feel the a7 IV really shows its worth. Now, I only did a few tests here, but when it comes to continuous shooting, particularly in RAW plus JPEG, which I really only shoot in, the a7 IV will fire for 10 seconds, but continues to fire with half second buffers every second, while the a7 III hits the buffer wall at five seconds and then really chugs after that, with longer buffer times too, if you're waiting to clear. Furthermore, the formatting on the a7 IV happens in less than two seconds, while the a7 III feels like an eternity at 7.5 seconds. Autofocus is also noticeably improved on the a7 IV. They've improved human tracking by 30%, as well as added animal, bird, and subject tracking improvements. When it comes to video, if there is one favorite upgrade, I would say it is heat management. I get overheat warnings a ton on the a7 III, and I often had to wrap an ice pack around it for longer shoots. For real. Now, most reviewers have said that the a7 IV doesn't really overheat. That right there is the best reason to upgrade. Now, one other neat feature is the focus mapping, which really, really makes me feel like you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Maybe I just need more time with this, but I really can't see how this is an improvement over focus peaking. I'm sure once you're used to it, it's like great, but thankfully they still have focus peaking available on the a7 IV for old, stubborn dogs like me. Okay, so let's talk high ISO performance. Now, I did a quick test, but just consider this. It's a very anecdotal example. However, I couldn't really see enough of a difference. Now, there is a difference, and the higher resolution in photo mode can help to make that noise print smaller, but it wasn't significant enough for me to say that the a7 IV is noticeably better. All right, to sum this up, I will say that I have literally beaten the sh out of my a7 III. And since I usually shoot video these days on the FX3 or cinema cameras, I don't really feel the need to upgrade just yet. Now, the same could be said for those who don't really need an upgrade in their autofocus performance. If you do portraits or landscapes, I think you'll still be very happy with the a7 III. However, if you run a business where you are expected to do photography and video, and you want one camera to do it all, that doesn't overheat, then beyond a doubt, the a7 IV is worth it. Now, say can be said for anything where the new autofocus features come into play, like sports, wildlife, travel, weddings, etc. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and comment in the comment section below. Unlike the a7 III video, I didn't wear a hat with a hoodie this time, so I don't know what you're gonna comment on, but I hope you think of something. For me, that's it, that's all. I'm out, peace.